Hey guys, Alex here, and tonight I'm going to do a movie review for you guys. And yeah, I said tonight, and I know it's really bright in here, but I decided to change the lighting for this uh, video just because I thought it would be a bright idea. So, uh, tonight's movie review will be a DVD review on Richard III. This is a, a film adaptation from the, the Shakespeare play called Richard III, and this is the 1955 version directed by Laurence Olivier. Um... There was a more recent version, but I've already seen that one. I've never seen this this version before. This is supposedly the better version. And um, what I was most intrigued by was that this one's actually set in medieval times, whereas the more recent one was set in the 20th century. I'm not sure why they did that. But hey, it's, it's art, so whatever. But Richard III, as you guys know, I don't really like Shakespeare plays, but... I do like some of the um, the movies that are made from his plays, like Henry V, that was a great movie. Um, Coriolanus, I found out that was a great movie. Um, the the Zeffirelli film about uh, Romeo and Juliet was pretty good. Um, what else? There was another one. Ah, whatever. This is, this is about Henry, Richard III, so let's stick with that. Richard III, let me give you some background information first. Um, I am going to launch into an unboxing video of this, but they haven't opened it yet. And I'm also going to do a movie review, but uh, let me give you some background information. Why is Richard III important? Well, to me, he's important because he is the last of the Plantagenet dynasty. Um, he was from the House of York, and he was defeated at the Battle of Bosworth by a guy named Henry Tudor. And of course, after Richard III bit the dust, it was Henry... Tudor, who became Henry VII, who gave rise to the, the Tudor dynasty. And um, why is the Tudor dynasty pretty cool? Well, if you guys remember a guy named Henry VII, sorry, <laughs> Henry VIII, you all know Henry VIII, he was one of the most popular rulers from that dynasty, and we know all about him and his many wives. He really got around. So, Richard III took over during the, the War of the Roses. War of the Roses, what was that? Well, that was basically a, uh, a, a civil war. In England, and that took place between the House of York and the House of Lancaster. Both were were um, part of the the Plantagenet dynasty, and Richard III was part of the House of York. So after his uh, after his demise, that was the end of the Plantagenets, the end of the House of York, um, and they gave rise to the Tudors. And why did they call it the War of the Roses? Well, actually, they didn't call it the War of the Roses. That was something that modern historians have labeled this conflict. It was actually called the War of the Cousins. But um, historians call it the War of the Roses just because one of the most popular symbols of the House of Lancaster and the House of York were the roses. Um, the House of York was represented by a, a white rose, and the House of Lancaster was represented by a red rose. Hence, the War of the Roses. Historians call it that just because it gives it a nice poetic title for this conflict. So, uh, Richard III, he was quite the, the ruler. Um, there were some rebellions under his rule. Of course, the last one led to the Battle of Bosworth. But um, he's kind of demonized in history. And um, one of the things that makes him kind of controversial was the way he became king. Um, his brother, Edward IV, King of Edward IV, he already had a successor, and it was a son, Edward V. But Edward V was too young, so Richard III was named Lord Protector, and he was basically going to rule in place of <laughs> Edward V until he was old enough to, to rule himself. But Richard III, being the, the clever man that he was, he uh, had him... Well, this is the theory. He had Edward V locked up and also... Um, the brother, also named Richard, locked up in the uh, the Tower of London, and um, there's a famous painting about the the princes in the Tower of London. So a lot of people think that Richard the Third had these guys in prison so that he could become king. So enough with the background information. I'm going to uh, unbox this video and then I'm going to do a quick re movie review. Oh, before I do that, I, I got some uh, some chocolate, and it's British chocolate. And how appropriate, guys! It's called Yorkie. And actually, my I have a, I have a story about this. Um, my last girlfriend broke up with me because she asked 
for some Yorkie chocolate. And I told her, it's not for girls. So, um, anyways, I'm gonna watch this movie and I'm gonna eat chocolate. I wanna try it right now, actually. It's supposed to be like really, uh, really chunky chocolate. Hey, I'm also gonna do an, uh, an unpackaging video too of this chocolate. Once again, British chocolate, one of my favorite chocolates in the world. Boink! By the way, don't eat too much, don't eat too much chocolate, there's a lot of sugar, and it's very fattening, so only eat it in moderation. Hold on. It was definitely worth my, worth my last relationship. Um, I wouldn't say it's a galaxy chocolate good, but it's good. Alright guys. Whoops. Alright guys, we are going to unbox this bad boy here. And what should I use to unbox it? My keys? Nah. A Luftwaffe dagger? Nah. How about I use the uh, the chocolate? This uh, chocolate thing that I, I was eating earlier to open it. And um, if you'll note, it's kind of soft. So how would you cut open plastic with with this? Well, that's pretty easy. See right here where I opened it? If you fold it like this, watch this. See that nice sharp edge right here? See that? It's actually pretty sharp right there. So I'm going to use that to open this bad boy. Right here in the little weak spot where this little uh, concave portion is. One little puncture. Oops. Yep, it actually succeeded. See that? Here, I'll, I'll make it a little bit bigger. Hold on. i got to readjust this. Well, it was pretty sharp. Here we go. Try that again. It, it's pretty open, but I want to open it all the way. There you go. Now it's open. And and I can just peel it away slowly but surely. See that? Ta-da! And good, there's no tape on here. I hate when they put tape. It's just uncalled for. So here's the the inside. Alright guys, I just finished the movie. And, um... Well, let me just start by saying this movie is old. 1955. And I do like old movies. Like, I like movies from the 20s. I like movies... I like a lot of movies. But this particular one did not age that well to me. It seems that the acting was pretty dated. And... The pacing of the movie was awful. Like, I know it's Shakespeare. Like, as the Shakespeare, like, adaptation in terms of, like, faithfulness, this is pretty faithful to Shakespeare. But that doesn't make it a good movie. Um, the the more recent uh, Richard III movie, which is also based on Shakespeare, starring Ian McKellen, was, was much better than this. I hate to say it, it was just much better. Even though it had a 20th century setting to it, I think the one with Ian McKellen was was so much better than this one. Um, yeah, Lawrence Olivier, in his day, he was a great, he was a great actor. I mean, going by, by those standards. Uh, but in today, the, the acting is just really over the top. And um, I don't know, I just don't think he conveyed, you know, the, the character of Richard III. I didn't get the sense of of menace or complexity from Laurence Olivier. I mean, I'm not going to take anything away from him. Like, as I said, back in his day, he was a great actor, but compare his performance with Ian McKellen's performance in the more recent Richard III, there's really no comparison. I mean, Ian McKellen's fantastic. So what does this movie have going for it? Well, I like the costumes, I like the setting. And, um, the, the, the sets were pretty good, considering it was 1955. I mean, I personally would have loved to see the more recent versions set in medieval times. But it did not do that. So, in that respect, I would say this 1955 version did a much better job of, you know, of keeping it in the, in the time period. But in all other respects, such as directing, pacing, acting... The more recent version with Ian McKellen is so much better than this. I really hate to say that. And, um... I don't know, this this particular movie is one of the reasons why I don't like Shakespeare that much. There's just too much exposition, there's just too much talking. Uh, a lot of the things they say, like, it would take me, like, five seconds to say what one of these guys would say in, like, five minutes. It, they just keep going on and on and on and on. I know it's Shakespeare, but, but that doesn't make it good. Because, like... Henry V, 
the the old version with um with Kenneth. I love that I love that version. I mean I'm not saying Richard the Third is a terrible play. I'm just saying this version is not as good as the other version with Ian McKellen and I don't know. I I, I guess that I was kind of fed on the hype of this movie. So I was kind of disappointed in this movie. Um, I, I really think if you're going to make a movie out of a play, then you need to make it, you need to format it so it, so it, the pacing's better. The pacing was all off in this movie. I was getting bored by this movie, and that doesn't happen to me very often. Like, this is coming from a guy who likes The English Patient. I love The English Patient. Most people would find the movie boring. I did not. I mean, I like a lot of, you know, slow-paced movies, but I don't like a movie if it feels slow. This movie felt really, really slow, and I don't really want to offend any of the Shakespearean purists out there, but I did not like this movie. If I was to recommend some Shakespeare movies, then I'd recommend the other Richard III movie starring Ian McKellen. I would re I'd recommend Coriolanus starring Gerard Butler. Um, I would definitely recommend Henry V. Main reason why I wanted to watch this movie is because there aren't many movies that are set during the the War of the Roses. Um, there is a movie called War of the Roses, but that has nothing to do with the historical war of the War of the Roses. That was like a drama slash comedy slash I don't know, but it was starring it starred uh, Douglas and had nothing to do with the War of the Roses. Um, but yeah, this movie was. This movie took place at the end of the War of the Roses, culminating in the Battle of Bosworth. And um, I would say that the Battle of Bosworth in this movie, it was, it was portrayed fairly well, I suppose, um, considering they had a lack of extras to take part in the battle. Like, this guy did die in battle, um, Richard III. Like, he saw the enemy's leader, and he went for a charge on them, and... Um, he died in combat. I mean, there's a lot of things you can say ab about Richard III, but cowardice wouldn't be one of them. He was, he was, he was a soldier. Like you, you can't take that away from him. I would give this movie a 3.5 out of five. Um, I gave it a kind of a higher rating, even though I didn't like it, just because it was pretty faithful to Shakespeare. But as a movie, I, I just, I, I just can't recommend this. Like I would. I am never ever gonna watch this movie again. I was, I was bored to tears by it. Sorry to say that, but yeah. Um, if you want a movie based on the War of the Roses, this is one of the few that I know of. Actually, I don't really know of any other. Um, there's a TV show about about um Henry the Seventh. I haven't seen it yet, but uh, I might give that a shot because this one disappointed me. But anyways, I hope you hope this uh, video review was helpful for you guys, and I'll see you guys later.